before the sun rises, if you look off in the distance, you know, the mountains are, are silhouetted almost as if they were just cut out. Uh, you begin to see all the details and all the defined lines and canyons, and it's real beauty, natural beauty. You know, there's, there's magic to this land. My name is Froilán Hernández, and I'm the Desert Bighorn Sheep Program Leader for Texas Parks and Wildlife. When I'm up at up on top of Elephant Mountain uh, looking for the sheep, my first glimpse of them, it's, it's overwhelming. Even if it's just a single animal, that's really what makes my job you know, very interesting. I love my job. Historically, the native Texas desert bighorn sheep occurred in about 16 mountain ranges out here in, in the Trans-Pecos, mainly due to uh, unregulated hunting, diseases associated with the introduction of domestic sheep and goats, and net wire fencing. Uh, because of all those three things, uh, they brought the demise of, of the desert bighorn, and by the early 1960s, they, they were gone. They were all gone from Texas. The restoration effort has been going on for more than 50 years. Uh, luckily, the population in Texas is now big enough. We're using those sources to transplant animals to Big Bend Ranch State Park. The canyons that we have here, the hilltops will take you away. My name is Rod Treviso. I'm the General Park Superintendent for Big Bend Ranch State Park. We're not crowded and this is the place to be and enjoy the vastness of this park. It's beautiful here. Every trail that we have out here is so unique in itself. One of the most popular hikes is the Close Canyon. The beauty of that place is amazing from beginning to end. And then mountain bikers, lots of miles. Our trails are well marked. Come enjoy them, the place is waiting for you. When we started talking about the release coming in to release the desert bighorn sheep at Big Bend Ranch, I was all up and thumbs up like, yay, that's great. Why? Because I, we have so much to offer at Big Bend, Big Bend Ranch, we were lacking the one more thing that could be. Another addition now is gonna be the bighorn sheep. The morning of the capture, there's a sense of excitement. And once they come upon a herd, they try and capture what we call family units. And that's another measure taken to increase survivability. They fly up and they bank and they come back and they turn around and it's almost like a like a fast-paced roller coaster ride. It's all, you know, precision work, really all while keeping uh, the, you know, the animal's welfare in mind. We try and rush these things because we try and minimize the stress to the animals. You look up at the mountain and here you see the bubble of the helicopter and then you see the thing attached at the bottom and you know they're sheep. And as they get closer, there they are. When the idea came that they were gonna capture in uh, all these, uh, the desert bighorn sheep over at the Elephant Mountain, 
I was invited over there by the wildlife guys, and I said, heck yeah, I want to be there. I want to witness it, because I had never seen any of this done. Get the back, right here. I just couldn't resist. I felt their horns. Just hug me right under the arm. They were so rough in a way, and then the animal just breathing right there, his hot hair breathing on my hands. It was just, you know, it's, it's, it's like a rush that you get. You ready? They weigh about, what, 115 something? 15. Yeah. Just exciting, you know, to see that and feel that animal right there in my hands. I just couldn't believe it. Because normally they you see them way up in the mountains. I had them right there in my hands. It was beautiful. Is she good on Four or five. Yeah, it's okay. Four Once at the processing station, they're aged. You want to take a picture of the team? Yeah. You take fecal samples. They also take a blood samples. Uh, take uh, tissue samples. Four plus or four? Four plus. And those radio collars are, are there to help us monitor the bighorns. GPS, 0434. So that's where we get movement and uh, identify other variables such as travel corridors. Are we good? Let's put him in the trailer. Now, once the animal is done uh, being processed and he's taken over to the trailer, at that point, he's no longer hobbled. Don't unstrap until we get over. Yeah. So you have to watch it, and it's, it's almost like a, a mini rodeo. <laughs> this is it. As soon as we get those two sheep on the trailer, we're going to call it, call it for the day. From Elfin Mountain to the Bofasillos Mountains of uh, Big Bend Ranch State Park, it's roughly about two hours, uh, and that's going at a, you know, 60, 65 miles an hour. We we'll stop once or twice to make sure that everything's fine. Everything's fine. We uh, we keep on we keep on trucking. <laughs> We're the only state park in Texas with the bighorn now. It's amazing. And how fast they move, you know, through the country. So they're right at home. This is excellent. It'll be another opportunity, another activity that our visitors can come and enjoy here. Well, that's a good thing. Hopefully we'll get to have all those rams running around and just doing well and multiplying in numbers like we want them to. I'm just very excited to have them here. Come on, big boy. Okay. This is a big deal for state parks. It wasn't a couple of hours ago that they were at Elephant Mountain. Now here they are in their new home. Now they'll be here for, for, for the public to enjoy. And that, to me, is, is wonderful. It's a significant homecoming that's taken over 50 years to make it happen. The bighorns are back where they belong. It's a, you know, it's a wonderful experience. It's my dream come true. And watching them go up the side of the mountain is just icing on the cake. Very impressive seeing those little white rumps just jump, jump, moving so fast. Those animals look so happy to be home, releasing the country that they should be. We're here, we're seeing this, it's happening, you know, right in front of us. They're home again. <laughs>